fifth element over there. <laughs> Hi there. Thank you guys for your time. First of Thank, all. You. Thank you. Thank you for your time. You. Appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> Hit me. All right, Fred's gone through a lot in the last two seasons with you know being shot, having his ex-wife come back, and with Archie going over to Team Hiram. What can we expect from uh, Fred's journey over season three? Uh, it's funny when you say that. I'm like, what's worse, your wife coming back or getting shot? Flip a coin on that. I don't know. Um, you know, the thing that I've tried to have be the case is that Fred, Fred, and all the things that happen with Fred are absolutely it comes through or off of Archie. I am merely a vessel for that kid's life, and his whole life happens through the prism of Archie. I thought that was an interesting choice I wanted to make at the beginning for this character, because I've never done that. I've never played a character like that. Um, but I wanted to play that guy who, in his bones, and his, his deepest integrity, he is that guy who is all about his family and loves his son. And I'm having a good time doing that, because that's real different for me. I, I like it. Is it better for you to have to be a teenager, a rebel teenager, or a good father? <laughs> well, a father of I'll a tell teenager. you what, it, it felt better to be a teenager <laughs> in terms of my back and things like that. Uh -huh. um, and I loved playing those. So when I look back and I see some of the similar scenes that these guys get into that I got into, uh -huh. yeah, I loved it. I loved doing those scenes uh, on the day, and that was fun. I, I get a great deal of satisfaction out of doing this now. So I was I'm saying at the other table, I mean, I've spent a good deal of my career playing the guys who are more active and do things, and sometimes they're the bad boy and this and that, but this is a real challenge for me to play Fred, uh, to have him be that middle of the road conscience sort of for this whole show, and I like it. One of the things I've noticed with Fred is that no matter what he goes through, he's unchanged. He's still the same person. Are we going to see more of that, or is anything going to test him? Is, it's a great question. Um, he absolutely is going to get tested, and that's why I, I've spent all this time trying to build up a character of tremendous integrity, who you see is compassionate, and he wears his heart on his sleeve, so that when the other stuff comes, and I get into some other things, I'm hoping everybody will still love me and realize, hey, it's just a just a bad spot. He's not a bad guy, he's in a bad spot, kind of a thing, you know, because that's how life works. No, no, no bad guy's bad all the time. No good guy's good all the time. Everybody has those moments where the good meets the bad, and that's, that's life. So with Fred's life being so tied to Archie's, how does he cope with all that Archie's going through this season? Yeah. Um, the, I, I, I call it uh, the absence of Archie. That's Fred's biggest challenge. Is what is my life? When, when I spent my whole life being defined by being a father, and being this guy's father, to take him out of it, it sort of creates this vacuum in, in, in Fred's soul, in his head, in his heart. And uh, you don't always make your best choices in that place. That's what I'm saying. I hope you guys really like Fred. <laughs> I, really, I really do. He's having a tough time. Yeah. Uh, River, the audience recognize you like as Dylan McKay or not? <laughs> I get a little of both. Yeah, years, I, get, um, I, I get a little of both. Yeah. And I, I suppose that's the way, because I think 90210 is still there in somewhere, so it, you know, it's on and the other is on, and uh, I'm, I'm happy for both of them. Yeah. Do you think to be a, a since we, we're talking about two things? TV shows. TV shows. Uh, what do you think they have changed? Well, TV shows comparing with Belgium. Yes. Um, clearly, the, the way stories get told because of the phone, through the phone, and you mm -hmm. see so many characters texting information or receiving phone calls. Right, like the like the paradigm of storytelling in that regard has changed. The content of these stories. Um, I never saw Brenda and Kelly in a big lip lock. <laughs> You ever see that on 90210? If you did, send me that show because I missed it. <laughs> but here in Riverdale, man, that shit happens. I mean, I'm in the pilot, Betty and Veronica. I'm just like, yeah. Yeah, so they, and we, 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 we've been doing uh, shows about um, gay conversion therapy and the evils thereof. Um, this show has both the ability and the inclination to bite off some weirder, different types of stories to tell. And uh, I, I think it's good. I, I, I trust Roberto. He, he's not uh, gratuitous about it, but he touches on these different things that are, that, that are really are reflective of our society now, as opposed to way back then. And um, I think, yeah, I think the way he does that with uh, so many things on the show about uh, giving, giving um, all genders and all people in the LGBT community, everybody gets an equal seat at our table. And 
we don't you know, we don't have to tell the special stories about them because that's just who we are. You know, Riverdale. It's just, we got everyone. We love that. It's a great place to tell stories. And that's the last question, guys. Thank you. Really? Thank I thought you just got out of here. Go ahead. Go signing. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.